Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Happy What's Wednesday. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> I'm good. The week's flying by somehow. It's not on my side. Oh, man. It's going slow for you? Yeah. Too slow. Too, Too slow. slow. Too slow. Ugh. This meeting fell off my calendar for some reason. Oh, man. I know. All what? sorts of things have gone wacky on my calendar. I don't know. Oh, got Ryan hates, popping in. Outlook hates me. Outlook is, yeah. <laughs> Microsoft I'm still getting sucks. used to it. <laughs> Microsoft sucks. I, yeah, second that. They suck. There it is. Weird. Oh. Open the entire series. What's up, Ryan? Oh, still connecting audio. Oh, it ended after 10 occurrences. Oh yeah, this I did create this new link. Or this is technically a new link. Is it um is it gonna be a new number to call into? Mm, a new I a new meeting code, I mean. Um I didn't have a meeting code for this one. No, I mean a meeting ID and passcode. Oh, probably, yeah. Um, okay. Do you want that? Um, you can email it to me if you want, okay. unless you're going to post it in chat, then everybody that watches the video will be able to see it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I took away some of the stuff from the, the link here. Let me. Cause I can't follow zoom links because my, my thing is broken on my. It's a, probably a Microsoft problem. Oh, uh, I see. <laughs> it doesn't connect to like, yeah, it doesn't open the application properly for some reason. So for the last two years of my life, I've had to like copy the meeting code and oh, no. it, plunk it into my Zoom application and copy the passcode. And oh. yeah, it's, it's a royal pain in my <laughs> life. I did just email you the full link. Okay, cool. <laughs> What's up, Brian? Can you hear us now? I'm listening, but I broke the prongs on my headphones. Okay, cool. At least you can hear us, Brad. Bummer. <laughs> so I have no mic. Okay, well, you can oh. up in the chat anytime. Bummer. Let's see. Cool. Well, I got a few things to. I could start the meeting off of and then we'll get talking. This might be the group today. So oh, we're already recording. So I'll start in a few seconds here. And three, and two. Hello, everybody. We are back for another week of Wednesday blockchain webinars. This is week 12. We are a small group of enthusiasts of the blockchain ecosystem. We talk about NFTs. We talk about crypto every week at Wednesday at 8 a.m. If you're watching this and you want to be a part of our group, comment on this video and I will get you the Zoom link. So today and every other day we do this, I like to start off with a few moments of talking about some recent uh, research that I've done on some forms of blockchain. So there's a few notes I have here. One is that eBay is talking about accepting crypto payments and they have announced that they are working on that and it'll be implemented soon. Uh, so we will be able to pay for things on eBay by using cryptocurrencies um, just around the corner, which I think shows that it's another example that shows that cryptocurrency is going to be adopted um, and here in the future, possibly here to stay. And another thing that I found out was there are apartment complexes in Arizona. Uh, one of my students went to um, Arizona and went back home a few months ago and she was driving and she saw an apartment complex, a new apartment complex, and it's there was a big sign that says we only accept crypto uh, as form of rent. 
So this apartment complex that has 10 plus um, units uh, is accepting only rent in the form of crypto. And there's a big list of which cryptos, not any cryptocurrencies. Um, but that was another example of, wow, this, this company, this apartment complex company is only accepting crypto. I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting there. And then the last thing on my notes that I've researched this last week is uh, an NFT restaurant. Um, it's the first NFT restaurant in the world is based out of New York called Fly Fish Club. I'm going to share my screen and show you a couple things about Fly Fish Club. It was started by Gary Vaynerchuk and a couple of chefs out in New York City. That's the world's first NFT restaurant member, uh, the world's first NFT restaurant members only private dining club where membership is purchased on the blockchain of a non-fungible token and owned by the token holder to gain access to our restaurant and various culinary and culture experiences. So it's a seafood based restaurant. If you buy one of their NFTs, then you get access to the restaurant. And I believe there's even options to rent out the table that you own. So if you like own an NFT then um, of the Fly Fish Club, then you could rent out some or like lease because you own like a table or own like a little ownership of um, the restaurant. So then you can I believe rent out some of um, your time there. So if you had a friend that wanted to buy the next Friday night, then they could rent that out. I'm still kind of unsure of all of it, but it's super interesting. Um, and I'm gonna look on the, the OpenSea Marketplace to show you what the NFT looks like. Oh, there we go. All right, so here is the Fly Fish Club NFT. So kind of goes more into uh, the perks of the Fly Fish Club, unlimited access to a private dining room that will span across 10,000 square feet of an iconic New York City location. The space will consist of a bustling cocktail lounge, an upscale restaurant, intimate amakaze room, and an outdoor space. And this is what the NFTs look like. So if you purchase one of these NFTs, this is like for Ethereum, so about $12,000, then you would have access to that restaurant in New York City. You can go there when you please, 11,800. Um, let's see some of the activity. It's always cool on the OpenSea website. <clears throat> you can look at the items, but if you look at the activity, then you can see like, okay, how many people are really buying these NFTs? Because you look at the activity, and you see nobody's buying them in the last weeks, then you're like, oh, okay, maybe this isn't a good project. Um, but you can see that even one day ago, somebody bought one, two days ago, someone bought one. So it looks like the price is slowly going down. Let's see, 4.4, 4.4, 4.2. Um, but you can see people are buying these all day for the last week. Um, so pretty interesting that maybe it's a new model that might you know, this is the world's first, but who knows about the future and if there'll be, you know, places in our local towns that are going to be adopting this model. I personally think that gyms and golf courses should or could implement NFTs for their membership. Um, so I, I think a lot of businesses that kind of have a base model of a membership system, they could implement some sort of NFT for that membership. Um, and then giving that member the option to sell that membership at the end. It's kind of a, a perk um, of that member. Like if I am a member at a gym and I cancel that gym membership, I don't get any of that money back. But it would be nice if I could, if I cancel a gym, I could actually sell my gym membership for at least some money back. But yeah, that's my, that's my kind of few things for few things of research of last week. How's it going, Joe? Good morning. Good to see you. How, um, but that was a, a couple of things I researched last week. Anything you researched, Joe, or anything, anything new in your world with the blockchain? No, but I did, um, I did, you know, I've, I've been hearing some, 
some smaller, some smaller things, um, you know, you kind of got to really listen for it or look for it. But some of the, um, you know, in regards to sanctions against Russia, I know that Russia and a lot of, you know, there's been a lot of crypto activity through Russia. And, um, you know, obviously they're, they're sort of cyber um, crime hacking sort of stuff. But what I was really interested in is not so much um, the immediate stuff, but moreover, what kind of regulations might be coming out from the sanctions? Because that's one of the things that has been discussed is taking a closer look at crypto activity and some of the stuff like that. And I don't know if anybody's really heard anything because I'm just starting to hear like little grumbles of, of stuff. I haven't heard of any any um, of the establishment uh, you know, financial establishment going after crypto holdings or anything related mm-hmm. to these sanctions. But um, yeah, I don't know. Anybody hearing anything? I've just heard little grumblings of how, you know, there might be some more regulations. And I know that, you know, stuff towards um, crypto has been, you know, we had a conversation about taxes mm-hmm. several, several mm-hmm. sessions ago. So yeah, I'm curious, Kelly, have you heard anything about that? No, I just read that um, Russia has been stockpiling gold and stuff like that for several years. So, Mm -hmm. and they have lots of oil. So, Mm -hmm. you know, while our economic sanctions and our tech sanctions are going to hurt them a bit, um, you know, he was pretty prepared for what he's doing. Mm-hmm. yeah he, he exactly. was talking about like really trying to be sanction proof right yep mm-hmm. yeah i mean he's not a stupid man and he's a bad man but not a stupid man so yeah. unfortunately mm-hmm. um yeah yeah i've been hearing what some the... from or what was that joe no go ahead i was gonna say i've been hearing some talk amongst or hearing talks amongst people like walking around um, town I've heard multiple conversations that I was a part of that I just was like oh they're talking about blockchain or like oh they're talking about cryptocurrencies um, and even in the hallway at CR the other day people were really diving into like the difference between a private key and a public key and this mm-hmm. person was trying to explain to someone else like no 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 private key you can you have to keep and you don't want to write it in your phone or public key you can send to your friends and that's how you pay or that's how you get paid and I'm walking by like oh yeah they're they're getting there that's they're getting there um, but I've, I've been kind of thrilled to hear that a lot of people are, you know, interested in the topic at least and more conversations are happening. Um, but yeah, that's at least when you said the grumbles of conversations, I'm like, yeah, people are having these convos around. Well, I think it's fascinating that, you know, we're, we're also applying it to something like geopolitics. So, I mean, it's, it's mm-hmm. a real, sure. real, mm-hmm. real thing, you know, so, um, mm-hmm. that's, it just goes to show where we're where it's headed so right yeah Absolutely. right be- right before you popped on i mentioned that ebay is i'm um, going to be taking uh, cryptocurrencies payments um in the next you know this year so that's like the world's biggest secondhand marketplace and that's right. an international company so it's might be might yeah, i don't know i just see, see the snowball effect of you know multiple things accepting crypto so if eBay is talking about doing it, then is it reasonable to assume or, or has PayPal already had a platform like PayPal won't be opening a, a crypto wallet or anything, would they? Or, they're, or they're they, do be, they already have that? I, I think I was actually just on PayPal and I saw something about crypto. I was Ooh. doing some damage control situation that because I got a little bit too stoned on Sunday night and made bad purchase. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Whoops. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> We've never done that. Don't worry. <laughs> Oops. Well, um. At least that's exciting that PayPal is in the, is in the loop now. <laughs> anyway, I saw crypto something or other on PayPal while I was dealing nice. with that <laughs> nonsense. Yeah. Um. <laughs> well, and we know Cash App and I feel like Venmo is it's got to yeah. be in there too. Yeah, I'm sure that they are. Mm-hmm. I believe I'm one million 
53,953 in line for the PayPal crypto wallet. <laughs> Ryan, <Really>? you're awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God, is that what Ryan just said? Yeah, in chat. <laughs> He says, actually, he's like, I no, love I'm it. curious. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, my goodness. Oh, let's see here. Oh, we got Tom coming it. in. I want to share my screen. Fantastic. <laughs> share my screen. It looks like they might take crypto payments, already accept NFTs. Oh, uh, a few days ago. Yeah. Okay, that's not a good article. Good morning, Tom. How are we doing this morning? I'm doing pretty good. Nice. We've, we've touched on a few things so far. Did you have anything with, from the last week that you, you noticed in the blockchain? I've just been trying to find uh, uh, energy sharing um, blockchain projects because I think that has a lot of potential. And mm. there was uh, uh, this one that I was looking at. Um, I got to pull up the name. Give me a second. <clears throat> Energy sharing. That's right. We talked about that last week. I missed that conversation. Yeah. So we talked about how um, energy could be like uh, energy could be on the grid. I'm trying to remember exactly how. If you have solar panels and you are taking an energy, off, mm -hmm. If you are on, if you are on a grid, PG&E just snipes anything extra that you get, and then they use it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you could, if we can connect our solar panels to a blockchain um, grid, then we will, you can sell the other energy or the energy that you're not using to other consumers, even around the United States. Um, really? Yeah, just like PG&E sells our energy up to Oregon, Washington, Nevada. You know, where they're selling our energy. They can the fiber optic cables. <laughs> Um, have lightning speed um, distance. So we talked about mm -hmm. how like, wow, how cool it's like giving consumers even more, um, you know, more ownership of things that they own. So it was like, wow, right. solar panels and blockchain to sell your energy, that's never been even thought of. Not only that too, um, a cool thing about like uh, uh, energy sharing via blockchain is that say like you have a whole entire city or like the world set up on a smart grid and mm -hmm. it runs on renewable energy say that like one side of the world you know the sun's turning around and around so like if you have solar panel on one side of the world and you know the sun goes out then the uh, blockchain can say okay let's redistribute energy from this area and put it to this area to make up for these losses and stuff and um you know it has a lot of potential uh just uh, uh decentralizing a centralized grid so that people can you know share their energy and you know be able to pay be paid for the extra energy that they generate fascinating so wild because one of my stretch goals for my house and my property is solar mm -hmm. getting solar panels up on my roofs yes i have three goal. three buildings and um I want to get solar up there as soon as possible. So that's very interesting. Yeah, one of the uh, the project that I was looking at is called Power Ledger. If you Google powerledger.io. Okay. Power Ledger. Oh, really? You should Google uh, it, Matt, and show uh, screen share. Yeah, I will. Oh. Powerledger.io. Wins the World Summit Award, that guy? Uh, screen share it. Let me see. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was looking at. Interesting. Hmm, what we got here? Winner of 2021. Okay. Has recognized Power Ledger for its contribution to the UN Sustainability Development Goals agenda, winning the Diamond Trophy for its peer to peer project. Nice. <laughs> Solar panels, 11 countries, more sustainable solar grid. Power Ledger, we help people transact energy, trade environmental commodities, and invest in renewables. Sweet. Wow, this is cool, man. Yes, yeah, projects it. like this that get me hyped. 
Yeah. The internet of energy. I love it. (laughs) Oh my God. (laughs) Wow. Um, Just just like the blockchain is decentralizing big tech tech companies and platforms like that, it can also decentralize energy, which is really awesome. God. So something like this could like cripple or just eliminate the likes of PG&E. Is that what you're saying? (laughs) It could definitely eliminate the need. Oh God, <laughs> wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> yeah, I would. If if somebody was if somebody in the United States was selling energy, even if it was the same price as PG&E, I would, you know, I could cancel PG&E. Well, I mean, we have an we have that here. The the alternative power company, um, the Rebel Coast Redwood Energy Authority Energy Agency. Yeah, Redwood Energy Authority or whatever they are. Yeah. Um, and they're actually just a, a hair more than pg and I think. Um, but they're local or there's something about yeah, they, it. But... They, bought, they bought the yeah the, some grids from pg and e and they cl- I know somebody who works there and they claim to be just a slide cheaper, but who knows? I see. Yeah. But they function off of pg and E's. Mm-hmm. They do equipment and all of that but yeah it's just pg and is just so ugly and yeah. awful but yeah that's why i just want to get some solar panels up there and mm-hmm. start doing my own. right <laughs> stop being so heavily dependent on pg and e yeah no we don't we don't need we don't like that yeah it's killing me what? this is so yeah, this is awesome. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, this is cool. <laughs> I really hope that this, it sounds like they've been trying to work on this since 2016. Democratization. Democratization. Democratization of energy. Sending energy around the world, that seems wild, Just like to another country. But I wonder if the fiber optic cable is like going through the ocean. Is that? I wonder if that's how it is. Yeah, I was just I, I was just thinking about the echo line. Yeah, like, right. I mean, why not? Mm-hmm. Like we can do stuff like that. Why can't like? Yeah, there. I'm pretty. That's how we send internet and like mm-hmm. data across the world. So, I right. Send energy too. Yeah, there. There. It doesn't seem like it would mm-hmm. be that hard. But yeah, no. I don't know. Cool. Well, I'm pretty optimistic on this this energy thing. I'm optimistic on um, the cryptos being, you know, utilized in many different companies. And now, so many big companies like eBay are announcing like we're going to accept crypto. I just I mm. see the the snowball effect is so getting so much bigger, bigger now. I'm pretty pretty optimistic here. There's a lot of naysayers and think people saying that it's a Ponzi scheme and. Um, you know, I heard someone say that like 10% of 10% of the Bitcoin holders own 90% of the actual Bitcoin. So there's, you know, a lot of elites in, in the ecosystem that, you know, some people say there's fear of like, oh, whenever, you know, whatever they do, it, they control the market and whatnot. Um, but I don't entirely subscribe to the fear-based um, models of like, you know, staying away from this technology completely because we're afraid because it's going to, you know, we're going to lose all of our money, but, you know, never invest anything you can't f- afford to lose. Um, so, but, yeah. Sorry. Uh, uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Finish your no. thought there. Oh, no, I was, I was, that was the end there. I just was trying to say that I've been hearing some negative stuff about the ecosystem, but I have my ears peeled towards that negative stuff because I, I enjoy hearing both sides. Um, but I'm just saying I'm optimistic. Yeah, me too. Um, I have uh, uh, a topic that uh, kind of relates to uh, current events that are happening right now. Um, So the thing about cryptocurrency is that you can exchange value from peer to peer, Mm -hmm. you know, and there's no restrictions from like governments and stuff like that. But the problem is, is like when you have recent events like this with like Ukraine and stuff, and Mm -hmm. we're putting sanctions on Russia and all of that. Mm-hmm. how are we going to like restrict them from accepting cryptocurrency and stuff like that or you know like that could be an issue like and mm-hmm. i think there's like a government agencies right now that are working on projects 
to uh, uh, track, you know, crypto payments and movements and stuff, uh, mark addresses of wallets and stuff so that funds can't be sent to certain places or they can't mm. cash it for actual cash on exchanges. I just, I just thought that's something that's happening right now that mm -hmm. could be problematic. And I'm wondering what kind of solutions that they're working towards without crippling the crypto economy. Yeah, I'm curious. Like, are they able to just like halt the exchange exchanges in just Russia? Do you think? Well, they can restrict. Like, they can't stop cryptocurrency moving from person to person, but mm -hmm. they can stop changing cryptocurrency to fiat currency. Mm. So I think that's something that they can do. But you know, mm -hmm. like, what's to stop uh, uh, North Korea from sending a little bit of funds to Russia, you know, to back them up? I'm not saying mm -hmm. they have a massive amount of money. I'm just saying, you know, mm -hmm. like people who aren't on board, you know, with helping Ukraine could potentially fund Russia through these back channels. And I think that could be problematic, like I was saying. Yeah, true. That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder what regulation is going to look like if, if, if it even happen, you know, it happens in our country too, if, if there's a halt. I mean, I, what I see is the government is going to just adopt rather than try to uh, eliminate. They're going to adopt and try to use it to their advantage or start accepting, you know, taxes and crypto and start accepting, you know, different forms of payments in crypto. Oh, yeah. and, and that's just how I, I feel like, you know, they can't beat us. So they, they have to join us. That's, but if they could, you know, hold sanctions on even just different exchanges, but I don't know, that's kind of just my initial thoughts. Yeah, the cat's out of the bag. Like, there's no way they can stop, you know, the decentralization that's happening. It's just, mm -hmm. I'm curious how they're going to start adapting to it and working mm -hmm. with it. And, uh, uh, um, sorry, I'm drawing the brain fart, um, how they're going to be able to regulate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I'm curious. Ryan, Ryan got some in the chat. We got the, another the National Gas Fee Agency. What's that, Joe? I'm just saying that's what's you're, you're talking about them adopting and anything that they can co-opt for, you know, in terms of bureaucracy at another at another agency. It's more mm. of a humorous notion. Gas but... fee, gas fee, as in like the NFT, like gas. That's yeah, like, like you know, every every transaction when mm -hmm. you're switching currency, you know, comes with the yeah. comes with a gas fee, and so they'll they'll figure out a way to the national to gas of, fee agency. They'll figure out a way to kind of pull a little bit off of the top on that one. Yeah, but, they'll take their you know percent. if I think you know regulations are always a tough thing because if it you know it it makes it onerous for for development right mm -hmm. that's one of the big things about um you know regulation mm -hmm. but it will lead in the long term to stability of something um the more you know the more something is regulated and and how it's regulated but mm -hmm. this is kind of this is i mean one of the most fascinating things about what's happening in in ukraine with the financial um uh with the financial uh sanction stuff is you look at a country you look at a country like um, like Switzerland, and now they're switching their banking. Mm. You, know, you have these countries that have made a lot, a lot of money over the years through their through their financial institutions, and they're they're making an effort to to change mm -hmm. in order to support these sanctions. So, mm -hmm. you know, the decentralized nature of crypto is obviously going to make it difficult, like Tom was saying. So, you can't stop peer to peer stuff, but as far as major institutions. And I mean, the ruble is like, what? What's it worth today? It's like worth nothing. You see the lines mm -hmm. of people at the ATMs, which is fascinating for sure. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It'll be it'll be interesting, like everyone's talking about, to see how this tool would be mm -hmm. would be levied against them as well. Sure that. All right, Ryan's got some for us in the chat. We got Sandbox. Uh, FYI, Sandbox Alpha Season 2 starts tomorrow. Let's see what we got here. This is the kind of the homepage of the Sandbox. Welcome to the open metaverse. So this, we haven't been able to jump into the Sandbox and walk around 
but it looks like on March 2nd or March 3rd, is that when we'll actually be able to join in, Ryan, and walk around? Register. Oh, let's see, does Ryan have some for us in the chat? Yep. Are you, does it cost money to like jump in or, like, or is it like Decentraland where it, where you, it doesn't cost anything to hop in there? Do you know? Free, but more access with the pass. Okay. So yeah, there's the alpha pass and the, okay, more access. Okay. I see how it's going to work. Well, it looks super cool. Snoop Dogg's been all about this. This is where Snoop's been pouring millions into the sandbox and building and creating, gonna have concerts and other artists are gonna have concerts in here. There's games you can make and create over this icon. You can literally create different graphics, um, kind of out of blocks. It's kind of like a Minecrafty type of um, type of graphics, but it's cool. Like even Ryan in the chat here, he's made some things that people can buy and use within the metaverse space. And you can play and even earn gold or real sand or the crypto play to earn. This is sweet. Ryan, I'm gonna have to hop in there with you. Do you have the Apple Pass? No, yeah, I think it was like 5K, huh? It's kind of steep. All right, well, anything else you guys want to touch on today? There'll be giveaways and Twitch streams and things. Also, you can get it by playing the free version, I guess. Okay, well. We should all have a metaverse party tomorrow, March 3rd. Sandbox is launching. Cool. Thanks, Ryan. Any other blockchain thoughts or ideas going on out here? I'm floating some cool ideas. I've sold a lot on eBay the last few years. So I was super hyped to see the eBay payment things. I would love to sell some things and get crypto. I'm like, so, so hyped about that. Yo, I thought, it, I thought about that exact thing. I was like, dude, <laughs> <laughs> you know, cause it's like you, you sell something on eBay and it's like, generally I would just use that to, to fund more purchase of cameras or something like that. And it's like, mm -hmm. it'd be so cool to be able to, you know, bank that and, mm -hmm. you know, freeze it and have mm -hmm. it as an investment for sure. That's, that's exactly what I thought too. Yeah. I mean, pay, like PayPal used to be linked with eBay, like super hard where you'd, you know, have to use PayPal and then it would like, you know, store in PayPal. I'm curious if now if like the crypto thing, is that going to be stored? Like maybe it's just in our wallet, but I'm wondering if, yeah, then we could just use that crypto to buy new purchases. Cause I do the same thing. I've, sell on eBay and then I use that money to buy new things on eBay. Um, but it'd be crazy to like sell, get some Ethereum and then, you know, maybe even use some of that Ethereum for new things or keep it. I don't know. It's just like, whoa. Does that mean yeah, Amazon so and uh, the other marketplaces are going to be adopting this soon? No, I wouldn't. Right. They? right. Mm -hmm. Huh. Crazy. Yeah, well, that's all, that's, that's all I have today. If, um, if you guys don't have anything else, we could, could end it. Yeah, man. Good to, good to see you, man. Good to see you <laughs> yeah, guys. Thanks a lot. To, good to see you all, Ryan. Hopefully you get your mic fixed. And hopefully I see you in the metaverse tomorrow. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. <laughs> yeah, good seeing you all. Tom, I'll talk to you soon. Much have love a good rest of your week. Later. Yeah, we'll see you next week.